Hello, and welcome to Noobs Explain. In this episode, we're survivors in a zombie-filled wasteland, trying to collect the resources we need to survive. Well, except for that betrayer that might have slipped into our colony. Join us as we explain Dead of Winter. Set up. First place the colony board in the center of the table. Then place the six location boards next to the colony board. Next, give each player a player reference sheet. Decide which main objective you will be playing or pick one at random. Then place the main objective card in its space on the colony board and follow the setup instructions printed on the card. Shuffle the non-betrayal objective cards and set aside two face down cards per player. So in our four player example, we'll set aside eight cards. Then put the rest of the cards back in the box. Then shuffle the betrayal cards, place one face down on the stack of non-betrayal cards and return the rest to the box. Shuffle the created deck of betrayal and non-betrayal cards. Deal one to each player and return the rest to the box without looking at them. These cards will have additional secret objectives on them that the player must fulfill to win the game. Make sure that players keep these cards secret. Shuffle the crisis cards and place them face down on their space on the colony board. Separate and shuffle the survivor, exile, and crossroad decks and place them close to the play area. Shuffle all of the starter item cards and deal five to each player. Separate the remaining item cards according to their location, shuffle them and place them face down on the corresponding location board. Deal four survivor cards to each player. The players choose two of the survivors to keep and return the others to the deck. The survivor deck is then reshuffled. Each player makes one of their survivors their group leader and places that survivor's card next to the leader space on the player board. The other survivor card is placed below the player board in the followers section. Each player takes the corresponding standees for their survivors and places them on an open spot on the colony board. The player whose group leader has the highest influence takes the first player marker. You are now set up and ready to try to survive the zombie apocalypse. Game rounds. The game is played over a number of rounds as indicated on the main objective. Each round is divided into two phases, the player turn phase and the colony phase. Player turn phase. During the player turn phase, do the following. Reveal the current crisis by turning it over and placing it on top of the crisis deck. Each player makes sure that they have a number of action dice equal to the number of survivors they control plus one. So at the beginning of the game, each player should have three dice. If they have gained or lost survivors, adjust the number of dice accordingly. Note that some equipment or crossroad cards may allow a player to have additional action dice. Have all players roll their action dice and place them in the unused action dice section of the player board. Player turns. Starting with the first player, each player will take a turn. At the beginning of their turn, the player to their right will draw a crossroad card. We'll talk about those in a minute. On a player's turn, they may perform multiple actions. When the player runs out of actions to perform, or chooses not to perform any more actions, play passes to the player on their left. Play continues clockwise until all players have taken a turn. After the final player's turn, the colony phase takes place. Player Actions A player may choose to perform several actions on their turn. Some actions require them to spend action dice. 
Other actions are free actions that the player may take at any time during their turn without spending an action die. Free actions. The following actions may be performed without spending an action die. Play a card. The player may play one or more cards from their hand. If the card is an equipment card, it is attached to any survivor that the player controls. Note that once a card is equipped, it cannot be unequipped unless the survivor dies or hands the equipment off to another character. More on those situations later. If the card is an action card, it is placed in the colony's waste pile and the card's ability is performed. Note the cards can be played at any time during a player's turn. Add a card to the crisis. The player may add any number of cards from their hand to help resolve the crisis. These cards are placed face down on the crisis area of the colony board. We'll talk about resolving the crisis in the colony phase section. Move a survivor. The player may move each survivor they control once per round. The survivor can be moved from any location to any other location. When a survivor moves, unless stated otherwise on that survivor's special ability or on a card that has just been played, the player must roll for exposure for that survivor. We'll talk about rolling for exposure in a minute. Spend food tokens. The player may spend one or more food tokens from the colony's food supply to increase the values of one of their unused action die. The value increases by one for each food token spent. Make a request. The player may request one or more cards from other players. Other players are not required to give up their cards. Any cards acquired from other players this way must immediately be played and cannot be added to the crisis. Hand off equipment. A player may have one of the survivors they control hand an equipped equipment card to another survivor that shares a location with them. That survivor can belong to them or to another player. Note that if that card has a once per round ability that has already been used this round, the ability cannot be used again by handing it off to another player. Vote to exile. At some point, players may become convinced that there is a traitor in their midst. A player may call for an exile vote at any point during their turn. The player chooses another player to exile. All players then vote simultaneously with a thumbs up or thumbs down to exile the player. Tied votes are decided by the current first player. The player may not call for a vote to exile themselves because that would just be stupid. We'll talk about what happens to exiled players in a bit. Action Dice Actions There are several actions that a player may take that require one of their action dice to be used. These actions are Attack a Zombie A player can use an action die that meets or exceeds a survivor's fight value to fight a zombie at their location. The zombie is immediately killed, and unless stated otherwise by an ability or equipment card, the survivor immediately rolls for exposure but we'll talk about exposure later. The player may fight multiple zombies on the same turn as long as they have sufficient action dice to do so. Attack a survivor. A player can also use their fight value to attack another survivor that is at their location. Note the defending survivor must be one that another player controls. It cannot be another survivor the attacking player controls, nor can it be a helpless survivor at the base camp. In this case, the attacking survivor roll spends an action die that meets or exceeds their attack value. The defending player then rolls an action die. If the action die meets or exceeds that of the survivor's attack value, nothing happens. However, if the defending player rolls less than the survivor's attack value, the following takes place. The defending survivor receives one wound token. The attacking player then takes a random card from the defending player's hand. Note that the attacking player does not roll for exposure when attacking another survivor. Search the board. The player may perform a search action at any of the non-colony locations. To do this, the player spends an action die that meets or exceeds the survivor's search value. They then draw one card from that location's deck, looking at it but not yet adding it to their hand. The player then has two choices. They may either add the card to their hand and end their search, or they may choose to make noise. To make noise, the player places a noise token on an empty noise spot at the location and draws one extra card from that deck. The player may continue to make noise and draw extra cards as long as there are empty spots on the location. But beware, every noise token has a chance of producing an extra zombie 
at that location during the colony phase. When the player chooses to stop making noise, they choose one of the cards, put it into their hand, and the rest of the cards on the bottom of the deck. Build a barricade. The player may use any unused die of any value to build a barricade at their location. To do this, place a barricade token on an empty zombie space at the location. If there are no empty zombie spaces, a barricade may not be built at that time. Clean waste. If the player controls a survivor at the colony, they may spend an action die of any value to have the survivor remove the top three cards of the waste pile. These cards are removed from the game. Attract zombies. Sometimes it may become necessary to help a fellow survivor avoid certain death from a zombie overrun. It's just, it's just being a good neighbor. The player may spend any unused action die of any value to attract up to two zombies from any location to the survivor's current location. The attracted zombies are placed in the location according to the standard rules for adding zombies to a location. Survivor abilities. Some survivor abilities require an action die to be used to perform them. This is indicated by a number in parentheses at the beginning of the ability description. If this is the case, the player must spend an unused action die that meets or exceeds the value to perform the action. Colony phase. The colony phase begins when the last player has finished their turn. During the colony phase, perform the following actions in order. Pay food. Pay one food from the colony food supply for every two survivors, including helpless survivors, that are in the colony. If there are an odd number of survivors, round up. For instance, five survivors in the colony require three food. If there is not enough food in the colony's pantry to feed all the survivors, then do the following in order. Do not remove any food tokens. Place one starvation token in the food supply. Reduce morale by the number of starvation tokens in the food supply. Check waste. Count the number of cards in the colony's waste pile. For every 10 cards in the waste pile, reduce the colony's morale by one. For instance, if there are 22 cards in the waste pile, the colony loses two morale. Resolve the crisis. Without looking at them, shuffle the cards that were added to the crisis pile by all the players. Then reveal the cards to determine if the crisis was successfully resolved. For every item in the crisis pile that matches the type required by the crisis, add one point. For every item in the pile whose type does not match, subtract one point. If the point total equals or exceeds the number indicated on the crisis card, the crisis has been averted. Additionally, if the point exceeds the indicated number by two or more, increase morale by one. However, if the point total is lower than the number required by the crisis, immediately resolve the crisis on the card and know that there is a traitor in your midst. Add zombies. Add one zombie to the colony for every two survivors in the colony, including helpless survivors rounded up. This number should match the amount of food you needed to pay in step one. When adding zombies to the colony, start at entry location one, and add one zombie to each location in number order until you've added all the required zombies. If more than six zombies are added, start back at location one and keep adding zombies in order. Then add one zombie to each non-colony location equal to the number of survivors at that location. Finally, if there are any noise tokens at any locations, resolve them one at a time. To resolve a noise token, roll an action die, on a roll of three or lower, add an additional zombie to that location. Check the main objective. Check to see if the requirements of the main objective have been met. If so, the game immediately ends. We'll explain what that happens, what happens when the game ends a little later. Move the round marker. Move the round marker down one space on the round track. If it is moved into the zero space, the game immediately ends. Pass the first player token. The player who currently has a first player token passes the token to the player on their left. This is the end of the colony phase. You now return to the beginning of the player phase and continue until the game ends. Rolling for exposure. Whenever a survivor moves or kills a zombie, the player that controls that survivor must immediately roll the exposure die. 
And this die has four possible outcomes. If a blank face is rolled, nothing happens. If a wound is rolled, the player adds a wound marker to that survivor's card. When the survivor takes three wounds, that survivor is dead. If a frostbite symbol is rolled, the player adds a frostbite marker to the survivor's card. And as long as the frostbite symbol remains, that survivor receives a wound marker at the beginning of each turn. If a bite symbol is rolled, that survivor immediately dies. And if there are any other survivors at the same location, the bite effect spreads to the next survivor with the lowest influence. Then the player that controls that survivor has two choices. They may immediately kill that survivor to prevent further spreading of infection, or they may roll the exposure die. If the player rolls a blank face, nothing happens and the survivor is spared for now. On any other roll, that survivor is killed and the bite spreads to the next survivor with the lowest morale score. The bite effect will continue to spread until a player chooses to either sacrifice a bitten survivor or they roll a blank face on the exposure die, or if there are no more survivors left in the location. Resolving Crossroads Cards At the beginning of each player's turn, the player to their right draws a Crossroads card. At the top of each Crossroads card, there is a trigger listed in italics. If at any point during the current player's turn that trigger is activated, the Crossroads card is resolved. The player holding the card reads the entire card text aloud. Most Crossroads cards offer two options that the current player must pick from. If the player cannot meet the conditions of one of the options on the card, then they must choose the other option. If the trigger on the Crossroads card doesn't activate during the player's turn, simply place the card on the bottom of the Crossroads deck. Adding Survivors Some effects can cause a player to add a new survivor to their following. When this happens, the player follows the instructions of the effect, adds the survivor card to their following, and adds the matching survivor standee to an empty space in the calling. This new survivor may immediately be used by the player. And remember to add a new action die at the beginning of your next turn. If there are no empty spaces left in the colony, then the player may not add any new survivors or play cards that would cause survivors to be added. Survivor Death In most games, at some point, a survivor will die. There are several ways that a survivor can be killed. If a zombie must be added to a location, but there are no empty spaces to add it, a zombie overrun occurs. When this happens, the survivor at the location with the lowest influence immediately dies. This will happen for each zombie that must be placed when there is no room. For instance, if two zombies should be placed at a location that is already full of zombies, then two survivors will die. If a zombie overrun occurs in the colony, and there are only helpless survivors in the colony, then a helpless survivor is removed and colony morale is reduced. When a survivor has three or more wound tokens, it is killed. When a survivor is bitten on an exposure roll, it is killed. There are also some card effects which may kill a survivor. When a survivor dies, the colony's morale is lowered by one point. That survivor, standee, and card are removed from the game. If the survivor had any equipment attached to it, one of two things will happen. If the survivor died in the colony, the equipment cards are returned to the player's hand. If the survivor died at a non-colony location, equipment cards are shuffled into that location's deck. If a player's last remaining survivor is killed, that player immediately removes all the cards in their hand from the game, draws the top card from the survivor deck, and makes that survivor their new group leader. Exiling a player. If the players successfully vote to exile a player, several things happen. The exiled player immediately draws an exile card from the deck. This card will adjust their secret objectives. The exiled player must immediately move all of their survivors that are in the colony to a non-colony location of their choice and follow the normal rules for movement. However, this movement does not count against the survivors one move on the player's turn. When a player is exiled, they follow some new rules. 
they cannot add cards to a crisis. If they are directed to add a helpless survivor to the colony, nothing happens. If the player adds a new survivor, that survivor is placed in the non-colony location of their choice instead of the colony. The exile player cannot spend colony food tokens to increase their dice. However, they may play food cards for the same effect. If a vote is called for by players or a crossroad card, the exiled player may not vote. If an exiled player's survivor is killed, the colony does not lose any morale. If the exiled player plays a card, it is removed from the game rather than being added to the waste pile. Game end. The game can end in one of several ways. If the morale track reaches zero, the game ends immediately. If the round track reaches zero, the game ends immediately. If the main objective has been completed when it is checked during the colony phase, the game ends immediately. Winning or losing? When the game ends, each player checks their secret objective. If all of their objectives have been accomplished, they win. If some of their objectives have not been accomplished, probably due to having been eaten by zombies, they lose. There can be multiple winners and losers at the end of the game, depending on how well each player did at accomplishing their goals. Thanks for joining us to learn to play Dead of Winter. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more gaming goodies. And until next time, game on! Colony phase begins... This new survey... Su I just didn't feel very confident, you know? The player may perform a search act at uh, blah blah blah. What is What is happening? It's making laser noises. I thought you were playing Bing, space bang. invaders in here. <laughs> if all of their objective has been a bit bleh. When the game ends, each player checks their secret. Yep. On a player's turn, they perform they may per If all of their objective Talk me no can, nuggets. Cut, print, check the gate, moving on. Go away before someone drops the house on YouTube!